appreciate the Lord and all that He's sitting by our way tonight. You got your Bible, show up and look with me. 25th chapter of Matthew. And the 14th verse. Very familiar scripture. I was said, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. Likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one, went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked, and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given. He shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Appreciate your patience. Bear with me. I'll read that to you. Praise and honor the Lord for His Word tonight. I thank Him for His Spirit. I thank Him for the truth that's in His Word and in His Spirit. Now maybe you begin to talk to the Lord today and, and again this evening. Uh, maybe this Scripture begin to get upon our heart. Uh, how did the Lord begin to teach you? Maybe to get them to understand what it is like. Uh, working for the kingdom of heaven. Now I want you to know that the Lord 
uh, gave to every one of his servants something to work with. Mm -hmm. He gave everyone, he didn't give anybody something that they wasn't able to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't give them more than they could take care of. And he didn't require less of them than what they could do. But he gave every man according to his several abilities. Mm -hmm. And straightway he took his journey. I want you to know that uh, every servant, uh, the first two had to take what the Lord gave them and work with it. And they had to gain what not only they had, but more to give back to Him when He came. And I want you to know that that third man went and took that that His Lord gave Him and hid it away. The Bible said after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And I want you to realize that when He had began to speak to each one, uh, maybe the one with the five began to tell him that he had brought those talents that he gave him and he gained some more. God bless. And I want you to notice what this Lord said to him. He said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'd like to talk to us tonight if the good Lord would help me. There may be a little bit that's been upon my heart about how me and you need to be faithful unto the Lord. I want you to know that whatever man had to work with, they never got it of themselves, but God gave it to them. What you've got tonight, you never got it on your own, but what you've got that's good, God put it there. Well, any talent that you've got, the Lord give it to you. Whatever work that you have to do, the Lord is the one to give it to you. Whatever sign He lets you work out, God's the one that enabled you to do that. And that me and you without God are nothing. That me and you without the power of God can do nothing. But the Son of God said, without me, you can do nothing. But I thought tonight, church, that me and you as His servants are not without Him. And the Lord is expecting us to do something with what He gives to us. God is looking for me and you to be faithful with that that He's entrusted to me and you. I want you to know these men that gained, how did they do it? How did they do it? By being faithful. By being faithful. By staying true to their Master. By taking that and not losing it but working with it and being faithful. I thought the Lord wants me and you to be faithful to Him. The Lord wants me and you, whether it's faithful to your altar, faithful to your God, faithful to His Word, faithful to His Spirit, faithful to the house of God, faithful to the brothers and the sisters. Boys, God wants me and you to be faithful servants. He wants a servant He can depend upon what He can call in the midnight hour. We often want to call on God in the midnight hour, but brother, God wants me and you to live in a way He can call on us in the midnight hour. Amen. 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 You just listen to me and I'll talk to you a little bit tonight by the help of the good Lord. I begin to talk to the Lord today. I want you to understand something. It is not the man that shouts the greatest that's necessarily going to make it in. It is not the best singer in the house of God that has got a sure ticket to make it in. Amen. It is not the one that speaks in tongues the most that necessarily is going to make it in. But brother, the one that's going to make it in is going to be the one that is faithful. Amen. The one that is there in the good times and in the bad times. Amen. The one that will serve God in the time of plenty and in the time of few. Amen. I want to ask you tonight, you ask yourself, have you been faithful to the Lord? Have we been faithful to the service that the Lord has given us? Have we been faithful to toil in the vineyard where the Father has put me and you? Had nobody ever been saved to sit on the sideline? God has never come by and saved somebody for no reason. But every one of us, He has hired 
for a penny a day. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Every man, woman, boy, and girl that's been born again, we have been hired to work and labor for the Father. Amen. And when the Father sent the Son, He said He's coming back and His reward is with Him. I want you to know tonight there won't be nobody shortchanged on that day. There's not going to be nobody that's going to be a, uh, maybe deserving one thing and get something else. But you're going to get exactly what you deserve on that day. If I've done well, I will receive well. But if I've been slothful, that man will bind me hand and foot and cast me in the outer darkness. Glory to God. The Lord is looking for somebody that he can trust. Amen. Well, when I had a store, ran a store, when I would go to hire somebody, there's times I would look at their past experience if they had any. Uh, maybe check on some references if they give them. And I wouldn't look for the one that was always calling in uh, the one that was always missing. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily want the one that had such a great amount of space between jobs. But I was looking for one that I could trust. One that if I hired them, that they would do the job that I hired them to do. That I would make a deal with them. I'll hire you and I'll train you and I'll teach you how to do that that I need you to do. And when you get to a point, I want to be able to walk away from you a little way and trust that you'll do that that I've hired you to do. Listen to me tonight, children. God is looking for me and you to be faithful on me. We're looking for the great things. God just wants us to be there every day. God wants your life. He wants your life. And too many weekend Christians. Amen, preacher. Amen. Too many church house Christians. Amen, preacher. And we live for the Lord as long as we're at the house of God. Rest of the week as long as the pastor's not around. Maybe it, you know, nobody don't know it don't hurt. Won't you know there's somebody that knows? Even if I'm not around, there's still a man that knows. I just want to talk to you just a little bit tonight about being a man that's faithful. About being a one that will take that and work with it. And let the Lord work with you. This other man took his one talent and he hid it. You know why he hid it? He tells you why he hid it. He hid it because he was afraid. How many of our people a time that the Lord will give you something. And instead of doing that, you hold back on God. Yeah. You hold back from that that God trusted you with yeah. because you are afraid. Whether it be afraid to go or afraid of man. Afraid of what folk might think about you. I want you to know something tonight. We better get to the mind in the way that we only worry about what God thinks about me and you. We better be worried about what this man is going to tell me and you. I don't care what the world will preach. I can only preach what the Word shows me. If I'm slothful, I will die lost. One prayer, one time, don't necessarily mean I'm going to make it all the way in. Amen. Help him, Lord. How many times you've seen these people come? You get in this altar and fill up at night, praying, getting saved, trying to get saved. Mm -hmm. And in the next service, some of them's missing. And some of them that are here don't come back and pray. And the next few services you look, and you do well if there's one or two that's still coming back and pray. Hello. It's good to pray to get saved, but to stay that way, you're going to have to keep praying. Amen. Hello, somebody. You listen to me tonight. We're getting down to the end. We are getting down to the very end of this way. Glory to God. It ain't going to be the popular that's going to make it. It's going to be that man or woman that is faithful unto God. That one that no matter if it's raining or the sun shining, when the Father says go, they're willing to go. Amen. That one that whether you're sleepy eyed or not, when the Father says go pray, you go pray. Hello. Glory to God. We better be doing what the Lord has given me and you to do. We better be doing that. We better be walking in the way. Glory to God. It's some, this, I don't know where this system comes from that you and I do for the Lord and we just think that He's got to do for me and you. Why don't we just serve the Lord with gladness?
Why don't we just serve Him because He's worthy to be served? Why don't we just do for the Lord and not look for nothing in return? Why don't we just live for the Lord and not look for no great thing in return? I ain't saying the Lord won't do it. And I'm saying if we're not careful, we don't want our payday down here. We don't want what we want down here. What's this that comes down here is just going to last for a season. But that that comes at the end is going to last forever. It's going to be there forever. Have you been faithful in the service the Lord has given you? Have you done that that the Lord has given you to do? I want you to notice something. Every man had his turn with their Lord. The one that had five, when it came his time, the master did not inquire of the one that had two. But he was talking to the one that he gave five to. When the one that had two come up, he wasn't asking about the one that had five. He was asking the one that had the two. And when the one that just had the one come up, he didn't ask him about any of the others. But it was time to reckon one-on-one, -on -one, servant to master. I want to tell you tonight that when your day comes, your hour comes and your hour is coming, my time is coming, we are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to give an account of every deed that we've done while in the body. We are going to give an account. God is not going to ask me about you. He's not going to ask you about my job, but He's going to ask you why you did not do that that He required you to do. Amen. He's not going to ask you about something He never wanted you to do. But that that He's given you. And some had five. Some had two. Some had one. And everybody got the same thing. As far as works. We all better have the same spirit. If you belong to the Father, you'll have the same spirit. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. But every not everyone's going to have the same work. To look at things nowadays, you think all they are is preaching, prophesying. Boy, well, there's more works than that. There's more things that needs to be done than that. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have that in your life? You could just walk over to the nursing home, walk up and down those hallways, and the Lord deliver folks. Wouldn't it be good, Brother Prayer, if you went to work someday and the Holy Ghost covered you up and let you go floor to floor and walk those aisles and bring folks out of their bed? Well, you might feel the doubt when you say that. I don't know about your God. I'm talking about my God. My God can do that. I, I'm not give up on my God. You might give up on yours, but I'm not give up on mine. But the Lord wants us to be faithful. We want more and more from the Lord. And the Lord's still waiting on us to do the little things that He gives to us. If we can't be faithful in the least, how can we be trusted to be faithful in the much? If God cannot trust me, with the little things He's already given me, why would He give me more? Amen. Listen to me. Let me talk to you tonight just a little bit of the help of the good Lord. These days are going to get worse. The hearts of men and women are going to, are going to wax worse and worse. More and more horrible things are going to come along. The abomination's already getting more boastful, more proud. They're going to get worse. It's coming. It's there. But my Bible teaches me that them that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Well, what does that mean to endure to the end? That means be faithful. That means to be faithful. Oh, now we can all go pray when the Spirit gets on you. Oh, when you're feeling good, oh, it's a good time to go pray. What about when your body don't feel so good? What about when your mind is pressed and your heart is heavy? If you ain't been there, you ought to thank the Lord and get ready because it's coming. We all got to walk that way. But what about when you don't feel the blessings like you do at other times? Oh, when everything's going well, is that the only time that I can pray and serve the Lord? When God is carrying me, is that the only time that I can try to do anything for the Lord? But somewhere along the way, God will set you down and see if you can walk and show you exactly where you stand before Him. We better be faithful, church. We better be faithful. 
Glory to God. He said, the only time I can do anything for the Lord is when I want something from Him. Now listen to me, children. In the natural speaking, if there's folks that the only time they fool with you is when they want something, you know that they're not really your friend. Amen. 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 Only time you see or hear from them, you just know that they want something from you. Yeah. You know that that's not really your friend. Yeah. Well, we ought not be that way with the Lord, should we? Yeah. Mm. You ever have one of them times when you just gather to you all and you say, Lord... I want to try to not ask you for anything right now. I just want to thank you for what you've done for me. Lord, I, I, I want to be able to do something for you. I want to be able to do something to put a smile on your face. Children, if we're not careful, we get so caught up in mine and your affairs of day-to-day -day living that we forget that God is going to require something for me and you. Yeah. Uh, true. Glory. Wouldn't you like to be faithful? How wonderful that it would be if everybody that professed to be saved would make it. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't that be wonderful if everybody would get to make it in? Children, you and I are going to have to be faithful if we make it in. I'm not the one that wrote the book. I'm not the man that hung upon the cross. Glory to God. I'm not the God that gave my son. Hello. And I'm not the one that gets to say who goes and who doesn't. If we get this just right, we want everybody to go. But you know, I'm going to tell you tonight, if you want this man to say well done, you will have to have done well. If you want to hear those words, well done. He'll have to be able to look at me. If I hear those words, you have to be able to look at me. And I will have to be pleasing in His sight. I will have to be standing there with my heart clean, my garments clean, and no work left undone. Listen to me now. We often hear talk about a 30-fold and a 60-fold and a 100-fold Christian. A 30-fold Christian still can't go out and sin. Amen. What you know is wrong becomes sin to you. Amen. That don't mean that you still go out and just live in your way. That's talking about bringing forth in the faith. Bringing forth fruits. Some just bring forth 30 fold. They don't bring as much as others. But we all better be bringing forth something. Yeah. And a 30 fold has to bring 100% of a 30 fold Christian. Right. Right. The man that had five had to do 100%. The one that had two had to give a hundred percent back because the one that had one still had that one. He hadn't lost it. He just failed to work with it. Now listen to what I just told you. Listen to what I just said. He didn't lose it. He just failed to use it. He failed to gain. Hmm? You don't have to go rob a bank to be lost. You don't have to go kill somebody to die lost. The easiest way to die lost is to come to church every night. Sit in a pew and don't sing, don't testify, don't pray through the week. Just sit there. Just sit there. And that'll be the easiest trip to hell you've ever had. But the Lord wants something from me and you. What does He want? He wants us to be faithful. I don't believe that Jesus always had pleasure in suffering. There came a time that He even asked the Father to remove this from Him. He knew what was coming. That flesh, that body He had knew what was coming. He did not want to die. He did not want to suffer that way. He had to pray until He got willing. You and I, brother, are going to have to pray until we get willing to do that and suffer anyway. Come on, brother. Glory to God. Men and women are so small today. If we don't have the best, we're going to quit serving God. If I don't get a vacation, I'm going to quit serving God. I'll get my rest when the Lord comes and 
takes me home. Amen. Come on, brother. We don't have the best clothes. If we can't go buy what we want. The Lord didn't save me so I could wear designer clothes. Huh? I'll just be honest with you, a lot of the clothes you see me wear would give to me. Amen. The Lord will make a way. <laughs> Do you hear me, brother? I said the Lord will make a way. Crab over here. You cannot preach the Lord will make a way until you've been down in that valley and have had God make a way for you. You can't stand and witness the miracles God will do unless you have God do miracles for you. You better be faithful. Whether I'm on the mountain or I'm in the valley or I'm tumbling and rolling down the hill to the valley, God, let me be found faithful. Let me be found that the Lord could look down and see that there's still one that will fear God and eschew evil. That there's still one that will trust in the Lord. What's wrong with us? If we're not careful, we get spoiled. We get spoiled. Amen. Begin to talk to the Lord today. begin to thank Him for different things. Now, Brother Perry, there's one thing I begin to thank Him for that I guess at times I mentioned, but really today was just stood out to me. I said, Lord, I thank You for all the Bibles that are in my home. Yeah. Right. time I didn't have a Bible, but now I've got Bibles in my home. The Word of God in my home. I just want her to. I can, I can sit and lay them out and go out and really have a study. Uh, thank you, Lord, for your word. Uh, we're looking for this, that, and the other. Let's get to the most. And thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Do you have his spirit? If you don't have his spirit, you're none of his. Let me ask you again, do you have his spirit? Thank you, Lord. I'm not the greatest that ever was, but I'm one of his. I'm not the fastest runner, but thank God I'm running for my life. Glory, glory, glory. I ain't the strongest, but I'm still climbing, Pat. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Have you thanked the Lord for his word? Glory to God. Brand new home's going to melt in a fervent heat. Your bank account's going to be shut down one day. But that Word of God will never pass away. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your Word. Oh, so we get our eyes up of this. We get our eyes everywhere but God. Thank you, Lord. Your blessings upon my family. The day and age we're living in, you got your loved ones still with you, gathered around you, you ought to thank the Lord for it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Violence is filling this land. You've just begun to see these things. You've just begun. But you ought to thank the Lord for the hedge round about your family. Amen. For the head, the hand of God, the shield of God over your little home. Whether you've got a fancy home or a shed somewhere to live in, thank God that you've got somewhere to lay your head. Because you're doing better than the Lord did when He was here. Paul was a man, he had to come from wealth to have the education that he had. He could speak different languages, he could read, he could write, he studied at the feet of Gamaliel. He was an educated man, he was a wealthy man. But he got something in his life that he wanted more than all the silver and all the gold that a man could have. He got to the point that he just counted it as dumb that he might obtain Christ. You know, we're going to have to get our minds to do it. Let all this world pass away. Just let me have Jesus. When I get to the end of this one, let me have something to offer unto God that He will accept me when I stand out before Him. God just wants you to be faithful. Listen to me. 
God is the one that does the healing. Amen. He is the one that casts out devils. He is the one that speaks us in tongues. He is the one that handles serpents. He is the one that gives power over poison. God is the one that does these things. Amen. You and I are simply supposed to live in a way that God can move through us to do these things. And to do that, you've got to be faithful. You've got to be faithful. Nobody else wants to go out. I want to go out. Hmm? You've got to be faithful. If you only know one song, sing it for the Lord with all that you've got. If you've only got one testimony, grab that testimony and give it in every opportunity that you can. Because that's your testimony. The Lord gave you that testimony. Don't bury it and hide it away. And then wait for the Lord to come back and then try to present it to Him. Because He's not going to accept it on that day. What work does the Lord give you to do? What work has He given you to do? What has He called you to do? Hmm? What is that that the Lord requires of you? Uh, how many times that I have started praying Regular. Something to come along. And I would ease up and pray. Brother Perry, I would seek the Lord and I would get so close. So close. Then the pressure from that enemy would come and I would cease being faithful. And I would let up and I would relent. You know what I'd have to do? I'd have to start all over again. Why? Because I failed to be faithful. Because I failed to do that every day. Glory to God. Children, don't look at this. Don't look at your life where you're sitting right now and, and try to have everything at one time. Live now. Live this moment, this time. It's all you've got. I can't call back yesterday. I can't grab a hold of tomorrow. Nope. I've got right now. I can't call back this morning. I've got right now. What have you done today to serve the Lord? What have you done? He said that this was the kingdom of heaven was like this man that was going to travel to a far country and he called his servants to him and he gave every man a talent according to his several abilities. Well, Jesus went away. He began to ascend up into heaven and recede into a cloud. When He went away, He went and began to pray to the Father. And he would send me and you a comfort. All right. All right. That same Jesus that went away is coming again in like manner. Amen. He's not going to appear mysteriously in the secret place overnight. He's not going to come in the darkness. He is light. He's going to come in the face of the whole world. And when He comes, you and I had better be found faithful. You better be found faithful. Lord and mercy, children. If I had an employee working for me, every time I turn my back, they go to sleep. I'd warn them a couple of times. Then I'd get rid of them and find somebody to take that place. Let me tell you something not to hurt nobody. I'll use me. I will never get to the place that I'm so important that God can't replace me. When you ever get to that place, brother, you're in trouble. When you get to that place, sister, that you feel like that you can't be replaced, you're in trouble. <laughs> You're in trouble. If I ever get to the place that I feel like nobody can counsel me, I know it all. I'm in trouble. Amen. And I'm fixing the fall. So we need to live, we need to live in the fear of God. Amen. We need to live in the fear of not making it. We're living like we've already got it made. Brother, you've not got it made. When your feet land on gold, you have it made. Amen. But until then, we're going to have to lift the name of Jesus. Until then, we're going to have to pack our cross. We're going to have to do it every day. 
in the good times and in the hard times. When that heart is heavy, you're going to have to pick up that cross and pack it anyway. Amen. Why don't we start living in the fear of God? Why don't we start living in the fear of the Lord? Living in a way, will I make it? Russell Parks, will I make it? That's up to me and what I do. That's up to me. Church, I tell you tonight, you're more than able to make it. You're more than able to make it all the way. But you'll have to do your best to make it in. You'll have to do your best. If the Lord had called you today, would you have been ready to go? I ain't asking you to look at one another. I'm not asking you to judge one another. I'm asking you to examine your own self. Had the Lord called you today? If the Lord was going to call you when I got done preaching, I'd go to sit down. Would you be ready to go? Would you be able to look up like John and say, Even so, come Lord Jesus. Or would you have to do like I've had to do? Say, Lord, don't call me right now. Lord, please, just give me, let me, let me have just a little while. I've been there. I don't pretend to be Superman. I'm human. I'm just a man. We better get to living like the end is upon us because it's here. We better get to living this thing like we don't have it all secure and wrapped up right now. One feeling. One thought wrong. One sin. One weight. One thing can knock us out of making anything. I love the Lord. Ladies and ladies. You always got anything you're welcome. You done opening all the little friends.